Um, this talk's going to be about uh, Drush. It's an introductory talk about Drush. It's, um, it's aimed at the beginner. So um, if you're ad advanced Drush, you're probably going to find this a little bit boring. How many of you have used Drush before? OK. Um, and who's, who's never seen it before? Oh. <laughs> I hope you're going to find this interesting. Um, what I'm trying to take away, I hope you can take away from this presentation today, is to understand just roughly what it is, how you can use it. I don't expect you to remember all the commands that I show you. Um, I've put them mainly in slides because I'm not really keen on live demos because they, they don't normally go very well for me. Um, but I, well, if there's some time afterwards, I will, some of these things I'll do again in a live environment just to show you them in action. Um, it's just going to be quite simple commands just to give you an understanding and hopefully um, those that don't use it regularly might be interested in going to go and try it out. Um, I'm a very light user of Drush myself and you know as a front-end developer I um, you know I'm not doing like serious database stuff but I do use it quite quite frequently but very lightly so um, let's see how this goes. Um, so interesting. Right, so what is Drush? Oh, wow, that's nice. Great. It's not going very well. Give us a sec. What is Drush? Drush is a Drupal shell. It's a command line interface um, to do scripting as well as a toolbox of very useful utilities. Um, so there's loads of cool things you can do with it. Um, and the reason why um, one might want to consider using Drush is to speed things up for yourself. If you have to go and uh, do things um, through the user interface, it normally takes quite a long time to load. Um, so Drush is a, a really cool, quick way of, of doing that. Um, the other thing that you can do with using Drush, you can also access commands that other modules uh, give. So, for example, features. There's some Drush commands to uh, uh, redo your features, export your features. Um, an Amiga theme, for example, there's Drush commands to run an Amiga theme wizard to create an Amiga 4 sub-theme. So there's loads of other um, interesting commands that, that empower that you get that you might not necessarily be able to access through the user interface if you are um, using a normal module. So with Drush, um, you can perform various tasks. Um, there's, it, it's growing all the time. Um, main things that you can perform tasks on are modules, themes, profiles, translations, and core. And the kinds of things that you can do is you can download modules, you can enable modules, you can uh, update modules, you can disable and uninstall them. And you can also do various tasks um, to do with various users. So other things you can do with Drush is you can clear the cache, you can run Quan, you can re-index your search, you can back up your database, you can migrate your database between different sites through one line of command if you set up Drush aliases. Um, so to use Drush locally, what you need to do is you actually have to have Drush installed on your local machine. And you need to have access to a command prompt or a terminal. If you're on Mac, you'll be using terminal. And you can use the Windows command prompt for um, local operations on Drush. But if you want to use Drush on your site that's hosted elsewhere, then you need to install Drush on that server as well. And you need to have SSH access into that box. Um, if, with Mac, you'll have a terminal. I'm a Mac user. Um, but for Windows, you would need to probably download something like Putty. If you just Google it, you should be able to find Putty that you can download it. So options for installing Drush. Um, Pear is the recommended way to install Drush. Now, me, me as a very light user, not, not really a strong command line user. I normally manually install it. But the reason why they say use Pear is because it can use it to update it. Whereas if you manually install it, you have to manually update it if you want to update Drush. 
there are other ways. Um, th this presentation is going to be um, on my slideshare.net, slideshare.net forward slash Anthony Alberton with an A-L-B-E-R-T-Y-N. Um, so all the links you'll be able to see. So don't worry trying to write all the commands down and all the links down as you go. So there's two main ways of using Drush. Um, one way is to um, CD into the root directory of your Drupal installation, whether it be um, locally or on your box, you, but you, and then you would use Drush as a, as, a, as a keyword, and then the command followed that. But if you set up site aliases, you can use Drush from your local machine, and you can act on any Drush installation. You don't have to SSH into the box. So you can say Drush, whatever your site alias name is, and whatever co command you want to follow by that, and that will act on the site that the alias is, is set up for. I have, at the, towards the end of the presentation, I have some more links for setting up aliases. So, um, the first thing you probably want to do when you open up Drush, your terminal, is to type Drush space help. That will give you a list of core commands that you can use with Drush. Typically, you'll have um, the command name, and in brackets, you'll have a short name. So you can either use the full command name, and if you do memorize some of the short names, you can use the shorter names, which are in brackets. So Drush help is very, is very helpful. You can also um, type in Drush space help, and then space whatever you want help on. So um, if, it's one, if, it's a, if it's a command on there and you want more information, that's what you can do. You can download modules with a Drush. The command basically is Drush, DL, and the module name. You can also download several modules at the same time. Just separate them by space. So you can say Drush, DL, date, context, display suite, DS for display suite. So that helps you to download mul multiple modules if you want at the same time. Themes as well, the same thing, Drush, DL, theme, theme name. To enable modules, um, you can do Drush EN module name, so Drush EN Amiga, or several modules at the same time, Drush EN date context display suite. Um, so you'll start seeing that the pattern for the Drush commands are very much the same. It starts with Drush and then one keyword or, or a couple of keywords after that, but they'll be very similar. Um, no, Drush, Drush finds that out for you because you are inside your root directory. Um, so the question was, how does Drush know what version of Drupal you're on? You need to CD into your box um, where your, your root directory is, and it looks, at your, it looks at your settings file, and it can see exactly what version of Drupal you, you're on. So if you're downloading things, it will download appropriate modules which are appropriate to your version of Drupal. Um, right. Um, then you can disable modules. There's a command for that is dis. Now I'm just, I'm just galloping through some commands here. I'll show you some of the commands afterwards. And you can download the presentation if you'd like and you can see them all um, there for yourself. Disable a module, Drush, Dis, Amiga. I, I find it so useful because when I set up a new site, I know, okay, I need context, I need date, I need this. And I can just rattle them off. And, and it's so much quicker than going to the site, downloading the file, unpacking the file, dropping the file in the, in the modules directory nipping over to modules and then trying to enable them. It's, it's a, if you keep on doing that over and over, you're losing like 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds every time. If you're a really busy developer, you've got to, have, you've got to, you've got to save yourself a lot of time with Drush. Um, you can disable multiple modules by just separating them with a the space. We'll separate your various modules. Then to uninstall it, so disabling is not the same as uninstalling. Disabling is just like unticking it in the modules directory. To uninstall it, you use Drush PM uninstall is a hyphen between PM and uninstall. Amiga, for example, or PM uninstall date display suite. Um, I'm not sure if it'll uninstall the theme because the theme is not technically installed, it's disabled. So I'd, I'd test whether that would uninstall it or disable it, but um, I'm not sure about that one. I'll have to check that one. I've just noticed that now. Then um, you can list modules, various modules on your site. Um, so if you go drush space PM hyphen list, um, or PML is the shortcut name for it. And that will give you a list of all the modules and, um, you know, on your site and whether they're enabled or whether they're not enabled. If you do Drush help PM hyphen list, it'll give you some attributes which you can add to it. So you can, for example, 
um, see information about what um, attributes you can add at the end of the command, and that will allow you to say, for example, only list modules which are um, contributed modules. You don't want to list all the core modules. So I'll demonstrate this later, but it will be drush space pm hyphen list space hyphen hyphen hyphen, uh, sorry, hyphen hyphen no hyphen core. But I'll show, you, <laughs> I'll show you that later. So you can get information about um, a particular module that you've installed on your site. If you go drush pm hyphen info space in the module name, it will give you information about the version, etc. Some, some details about the module that's on your site. So the cache, this is probably something I use the most. Drush, it's just so easy. Now, normally if you want to clear a cache on the site, you would have to log into your site, and then you'd have to go over to configuration, and then you'd have to click on performance, and then you have to click on clear cache, and you have to wait for it to clear. Now, if you're developing or theming, and you're doing this several times in an hour, and you're saving 10 seconds every time you're using Drush, it all adds up quite a lot. Um, so if you use the command Drush space CC, it will then give you options you know, what would you like to clear, the theme, core, what, what would you like to, you, so you have to pick a number, like one or two or three, It'll give you various versions. And if you go drush space cc space all, that will um, automatically clear all the caches for you. And that's what I normally use, I just say uh, drush cc all. Um, obviously if, you, if you're using things like Omega 4, um, there, are, there are other things that can help you that you don't need to clear caches, like page reload. So if you ever look at Omega 4, that's pretty cool. You can run cron on your site, just rush cron, and that runs cron on your site, nice and quick and easy. Various search settings that you can do on your site, um, so if you want to um, see how, how many items of your site haven't been, uh, nodes haven't been indexed yet by your search, so if someone wants to use your, your, your search on your site, it, the pages need to be indexed for it to come up in the results. And um, you can probably set that up to do on cron or whatever, but if you have just added a whole lot of pages or a whole lot of content that you've migrated and you want to see, you know, you want to index them and see what's not indexed, you can just go drush search status and it'll tell you how many items still need indexing. And if you do drush search hyphen index, that will um, index the remaining items, but it won't kill what's already there. Now, it's, it can be a pain indexing your search because you know it can be quite a few hoops you have to jump through to get it done nicely and Drush just does it, does it very, very beautifully. And then if you want to re-index your whole search from scratch, you just do Drush search hyphen re-index and that will completely re-index your whole search and, and, and that's, it's quick, you just get on with something else on your site while it's doing that. If you want to do list the site aliases which you've um, put on your site, it's Drush SA that will list all the site aliases. Now this is very useful if you're developing um, as part of a team and someone set up a, a box and you've got like a dev server on there or a staging server um, and you're not sure what the site alias is for the, for, for the dev server, if, if they give you SSH access to the box you just go drush SA and it, list, it just lists all the site aliases for you which is quite nice and then you can use your site alias. Now basically, um, just to remind you, a site alias is is a variable name that you give which represents a site. There's a file which you configure and you put the database details in for the site and the hosting details, etc., and passwords and things. And then whenever you use that as a handle, it will automatically, Drush will just log in and, and do whatever you need to do with it. So it's very, very, very powerful. Um, to show the status of your site, Drush status is quite a cool one. And if you wanted to see the status of a of a site on a different, not locally, you, you could either log in with SSH into that site and then do drush status, or from your local machine, you can just do drush whatever the alias name is and then status, and that will give you the status for that site. So it's very powerful, um, site aliases. You can um, do some various user functions. Um, it, well, you can act on very different ways in users. You can find out information about a user. So you don't want to give access to your client to Drush because it's very powerful and you can do some damaging things like dropping tables off a database and stuff. So do not give your clients access to Drush. Um, but if you've got your own account or you're managing users for other people and you need to quickly 
do things and maybe you just don't have time to log in and do lots of stuff, you can use Drush. If you want to find uh, information about a user, it's just Drush space user information and then the username. You can alternatively use the user ID or the user email address. So you might not know the username. And that will give you information about the user, like um, you know whether they're blocked or not blocked and what roles they have assigned to them, etc. So there's some, some very, very useful information you can get about a user very quickly. Um, you can block users, brush user hyphen block and then username. You can brush block several users at the same time. If someone's spamming you, you can use drush user hyphen block and then just separate, um, separate the names. Unblock a user is user hyphen unblock. Just unblock users. Once again, don't try and remember this all now, but um, hopefully you'll download this and have a look. You can create new users now. Okay, um, I'm not really a command line person, so normally something like this would scare me, but um, this is not that difficult if I break this down. Um, to create a new user, it's drush space user hyphen create the username that you want to give them. And then a space, and then the parameters are hyphen hyphen mail equals invert, uh, open commas, uh, um, a string, you put the email address, and then another space, hyphen hyphen password equals, and you put a string for the password. Now, I, I would probably tend to use the command line, I mean the, the GUI for this, but if you're doing this all the time and people keep on asking you for usernames or you want to put test users and stuff, it's, 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 once you get used to this, it can be very, very quickly, very quick to do. Um, you can add roles to a user. So someone phones and says, oh, I can't log in, and you want to give them some role, like um, site editor or whatever. If the role really, really exists on your site, it's just drush user add role, whatever the role is inside a string, and then the username that you want to apply it to. So I will demonstrate that if we have some time. Likewise, you can do the password for a user, drush user password, username, pipe, uh, it's, uh, hyphen hyphen password equals, and then in a string you put the password. So that's another thing that you can do um, with these things. Now, I don't really use the user ones a lot, but someone that's administrating a lot of users might find this useful. And how many times has somebody said, oh, I can't log into my site, and uh, you know, you quickly want to give them access. If you do drush space ULI space username, it will give them a one-time login link in Drush. In your window, it will just pop out the one-time login link, which you can drop in an email and send to somebody. And if you've locked yourself out of your site, and you like to access your site via Drush, if you just do Drush ULI without a username, it will give you user one's, user one's admin one-time login. And that's happened to me several times. So Drush ULI, and you get a login link one time, and you change your password, and then you, and you're done. And so that's a very, very useful command. You can delete a user completely by drush user cancel username. I think the word cancel is a little uh, misleading, but yes, user cancel will it will then prompt you and say, "Show you want to delete this user," and then it will just delete the user. You can delete several users as well at the same time. Um, once again, if you want to see more information about a specific command, you go drush space help space user hyphen cancel and give you all the options that you can can do with any command. Now this is something that I use a, a lot um, with my site updates. Often you get, you might have 10 or 20 clients or 10 clients um, where you have to up update their site and they've got all various versions of Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 modules. Um, it's quite a process to update um, the core to the latest stable or the latest secure version of core and all the modules with the right versions and everything. Um, one command, drush up, does that for you instantly. It, well, it runs the script and it just does it for you. But what I would recommend that is, I, my process normally for up doing security updates is I would create a dev box, get, the, um, get a copy of the, of, of, of the client's website on the dev box, I would run drush on, up on that and I would see what fails are tested and then if I'm happy with it, I'll run it on the, on, on the, on the live site. But I would, I would say be careful with that because you don't want to get in a twist. What Drush does is, when Drush does Drush up, it also does, applies any pending up, database updates and part of the, part of the run when it, when it does the update, 
it normally archives the site and then it does the update. So there is a way, there are ways that you can unarchive it and reapply the archive, but I would still say take caution and make sure that um, you, you, you back up the site first and test it on a dev version. It's, it's very important to do that. Another useful um, command is SQL dump. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have the database details or you've got to go into the settings file to get the database details or you just don't have access to the the database any, anywhere else through the Dust shell. Um, you could use uh, MySQL dump to do it if you know those commands, but Dush SQL dump um, pipe or great, sorry, greater than sign and then the path to your file would dump, um, you know, would just export the database and put it inside wherever you wanted to, to put it. Um, so that's very, very useful and it's a very, very powerful way of doing that. Um, if you've set up site aliases for your external sites, like for example dev and staging and um, your live site for example, um, you can do SQL sync. And what SQL sync does is it, 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 it basically exports the database from the one site and it imports it, deletes, drops the files of the other database and it imports. So it basically clones the database from one site to another. So if you do drush SQL sync at site one, at site two, replace obviously the at with your whatever your alias is. It will take the database from site one and it will import it into site two and everything that was in site two will be gone. Be careful the way you do this. So you would probably do drush SQL sync my site at my site dot dev space at my site dot stage or something like that, whatever you've set up for it. Um, so yeah, test it out. Make sure that you don't destroy your <laughs> destroy your dev site. Um, you can also resync um, like your files folder. I'm not very familiar with this command. I've used it a few times. Um, I know the, 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 the syntax is correct, but what it does is it would check the files and see what are the files that have changed in the files folder, and then it would just change those ones. So it doesn't completely replace the file folder, so it does a resync on that. For more information on site alias, SQL sync, and resync, these are very good. Um, commands are very powerful commands for deploying sites. Um, Drush help and whatever the name is will give you more information about that. Um, these are some links. This is just for the benefit of the, the recording for people that can't be here. Um, these are links to more information about uh, setting up your Drush aliases. Um, there's a blog about it and there's a nice information about synchronizing and deploying it and some valid examples of how to set up your um, Drush aliases in, in your files. Um, as mentioned, I'll give you a little bit of a demo if I can have some time afterwards. Um, manually installing Drush, this is basically the process that I uh, follow on my Mac. You basically, if you're going to do it manually, you download Drush from GitHub, um, you unpack your Drush into your user's username or elsewhere, you can put it in applications if you want. And then you grant yourself ex execution permissions on that Drush file. So this is the file with inside the Drush folder. So when you download Drush, you'll have a Drush folder, but there's another Drush file inside there. So on a Mac you would do, or Linux as well, you would do chmod space u plus x forward slash and your path to Drush and then forward slash Drush, which is the Drush inside there. That gives you execution permissions. And then you need to tell uh, your your computer where the where, where Drush is, and you can do that two ways. You can either um, upgrade your your update your uh, system path, or you can create a sim link. And in Mac, you can use your uh, either do it via the terminal or Bash or your profile. And there is more information about that um, in the at the end of this tutorial. And then um, for let me just have a look here. So. If you're updating your profile, if you decide you want to create the path thing, I've just updated my .profile file, which is a, um, a hidden file inside my Mac, and I just exported the path to my Drush. Um, for a sim link, you just cd into the user forward slash bin, and then you execute the command ln minus s, and then the path to your Drush in terminal. Um, but there is more information um, at the bottom. These two links will give you exact information about how to go about stalling. The first one's how to install it, and the second one is where people have had problems and, and where people have discussed how to overcome the various problems.
Once you've installed Drush, you want to make sure that Drush is working. So you want to go and in your command line do Drush hyphen hyphen version. I don't know if hyphen hyphen v will work, but certainly hyphen hyphen version does. It shows you Drush version. Or just type in Drush space help, and then you'll see that Drush is um, working. Just remember, um, to use Drush on one of your sites, you have to cd into the root directory of whatever site you want to work on. You might have several websites locally on your machine, which you're busy working on. So if you want to work on a different site, you need to cd into that root directory um, with Drush. Um, one note, um, if you have a multi-site install, um, then you want to cd into the directory with inside Drupal where the settings folder is for that multi-site to act on it. Um, but you can save yourself a lot of headaches by working out how to use Drush site aliases because you can just set up an alias for each and then you can run the command anywhere you want to in terminal and you can act on whatever site you want to, um, which I highly recommend, highly recommend doing that. Um, I'm just going to run through some learning resources and then I'll see if I can find a few minutes to do some live demos. <laughs> um, there's a Drush, there's a book, Drush User's Guide, User Guide um, by Pack Publishing. Um, this is not the only Drush book, but it's the only one that I know of at the minute. Um, there was a nice presentation from uh, San Diego Sandcamp 2013 from John Pack on YouTube. It's worth having a look. It's very good. It's about a 50-minute presentation on Drush. Um, in Prague, they did a, a two-hour talk on Drush. Um, I'm optimizing your development workflow for Drush. And I haven't looked at that, but I, uh, the first few minutes looked very interesting. So if you want to learn more about it, I recommend that you look at the previous Drupal camps and uh, Drupal cons. Um, most, most of the sessions are recorded and downloads and stuff. So there's, there's very, very good resources to learn there. Less helpful resources, but they, they do help a little bit um, for a list of like loads of Drush commands, all the Drush commands. If you go to drush.org, um, you will see all the commands for Drush for all the different versions of Drush. But it's a little less helpful because it just says what the command is and what it does. It's not really user-friendly for someone that's completely new to Drush. Someone that's new can find it maybe a little overwhelming. Um, and it's, I mean, how do you pick out the best bits, the 20% that you're going to use 80% of the time? So that's why I would say do the tutorials uh, and, and, and presentations from old Drupal cons. You can download Drush from GitHub, um, github.com, drushops, drush hyphen ops, forward slash Drush. There's a Windows installer for Drush as well, which I haven't tried, but if you, um, there's a link for it there to download it, but you can also go to drush.org and look in the resources tab, you will see um, various resources like the API docs as well as the Windows installer for Drush. That's a little bit about me. Um, I'm a front-end developer. Um, I, I, Jeff Beat and myself co-founded Drupal Cams in Cambridge and been running it for four, almost, four, almost five years. We've got about 500 members, which we're very proud of. Um, so if you guys ever do come up to Cambridge, um, you know, feel free to come to one of our meetups. We, um, some of the meetups we have um, at near Cambridge Station, which is, you know, it's an hour journey from the train. So let's see if I can show you a few things on Drush itself. Let's just make it here. This is where it all goes wrong. <laughs> so um, just forgive me if I'm looking down because I'm looking at my crib notes here. So Drush help, you would just type in Drush. Drush help. And that'll give you all the Drush information about the Drush. You can scroll up. So you can see, for example, let's find, let's pick on one here. Yeah. Um, um, like user create. I showed you a command earlier, Drush space user hyphen create. If you remembered the shortcut, you could have used Drush space UCRT. Um, so everything in brackets is, a, is an alternative shortcut, but sometimes it's just you know, to try and remember them, like UBLK is user block, and U, UBLK is user unblock. It's just, I don't know, I sometimes just find it's easier for me just to remember, you know, user block, user cancel, user create. It's you know, much easier to sometimes remember that. Um, so that's, um, that is the help file for Drush. What I have is, I have a, um, a little test site which I've 
done, we're not going to do much on the site itself, but I set up a little test site. So what I've done is I've um, to use Drush, I haven't set up an alias, so to do use Drush, I'm in the, I'm in the di directory where my Drupal installation is installed in my root directory for that Drupal installation. So uh, this is why I can uh, run Drush commands off this installation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to download a module. And that's a DL command, so you will go Drush. So we can download the date module, Drush DL date. That goes and fetches, uh, oh, okay, could not download project status information. And that'll be because I am not online. That's nice. Let's see if I can quickly tether. Second. I beg your pardon? Yeah, no, um, but I thought this, was, this would just be quicker for me to do. Um, so, Drush, DL date, let's try that again. It's normally quite fast. Um, right, so it's downloaded, and this is, this is through 3G, so it's downloaded, it's downloaded date uh, module for myself. Um, so I get to download Amiga now as well, which is a theme. So Drush, DL Amiga. All right, let's just download Amiga, Amiga now. So I can list all the modules on, that I have on this site. So it's Drush, PML. That lists all my modules, but it's not really helpful because it lists everything. It lists core as well. But if I do this, if I do drush help PML, it gives me options. It tells me that I can use some attributes. Oh, sorry, some attributes. Yeah, I can use some parameters. Is the right word um, with drush and with this command. So now if I do, you can see there's one called hyphen hyphen no hyphen called. So if I do this, if I do drush PML no call, that should list only modules which are not core, which is basically contribute. So you can see we've got date, uh, you can see some information, you can see we've got date now that's there. And we can see it's the status is not installed, and you can see the version of it. Um, so I can I can now enable date. So if I go like this, dash in date, that will ask me do I want to enable date? Yes. I'm also saying yes to uh, grabbing the extensions. So Drush automatically says, oh, I need various extensions. So now if I go Drush. You can now see that date module is enabled under the status. And to disable uh, the date module, I would just do drush this date, and that would disable the date module. Are you sure? Yes. Now I can go drush. And you will be able to see that the date is disabled. And if I want to uninstall date, I do drush pm pm uninstall date, and then I'll say yes. Are you sure you want to uninstall date? I say yes. So as you can see, um, it. You know, I'm not a strong user of Drush, but just a few commands you can do like quite quick stuff rather than having to log in um, to your Drush. Let me see if I can show you some more items. 
Um, right, so what we'll do is we'll quickly look at uh, clearing the cache. So the one option is Drush CC. If I do that, it will ask me what cache do I want to clear. All, Drush, theme registry, menu. I can pick one. I can say, okay, fine, I want to clear the theme registry. And that will just clear the theme registry for me, nothing else. And if I go Drush CC all, let me just clear my screen. They won't ask me. It will just go and automatically clear all the caches for me, and that's quick. Now just think, if you want to do that, imagine if you're busy developing, you just go Drush CC all, boom, cleared. Obviously, a larger site with a larger cache is going to take longer. It's not going to be so instant because it's a little quick install, but it's much quicker than it's going to take for you to use the command line, I mean, the graphical user interface. So um, let's see how we're doing for time. But I have to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how to create a user with Drush. Quickly create a new user. Drush user create. Test user is the username. And then we're going to give it a mail address. I don't know who owns that website, but they must have a lot of hits. Right, so Drush, user create, username, um, hyphen hyphen mail, which is the parameter, and hyphen hyphen password, um, which is also parameters of the strings, and that should create my user. You can see I've got user ID 5, some information about my user. Just quite quick. Now I can um, add a role to this user. I have a role in my site already defined as site editor. So to give a user a role, User add role. Oh, that won't work. I've got, name, I've got to name the role first. Right, so it's, it's Drush user add role site editor test user. And that adds the role. Now, how do I know that role was created? So, if I go drush user hyphen information in the username, I can see some information about him. So, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, thank you. It'll give me some information about my user, and you can see that they've now got the role of authenticated user as well as site editor. I can, um, I can block this user, um, and I can unblock them as well. So if I want to block this, I just go drush, user hyphen block. Right. So you can see the user is blocked, the status is blocked, and I can unblock that user as well, just with Drush user unblock, will unblock the user. If I, want to, if I want to get rid of that user completely, I can go Drush user cancel. And that would, are you sure you want to delete the account? Yes, I want to delete the account. User's gone. Now you can do 10 users at the same time, or three or four users at the same time. And there is um, two more commands, at least one more command that I want to show you, um, is your SQL dump. If I go drush, SQL dump pipe my home directory desktop. So it's Drush, SQL dump, a little pipe, um, 
a little, a little sign which means my home directory desktop, my site SQL. That is popped on my site. There's my SQL dump on my site. You can see. On, well, you can't see there. Let me show you. That's. Come on, you little. They just dumped my whole database inside uh, my, my file. And that was pretty quick and very powerful. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. Well, what you can do, the question just for the people that are, are, are listening to this presentation, the question was, um, what are the security implications basically for using site alias, especially if you want to send things off and things? It is through SSH, first of all, so it's a secure encrypted um, um, network. Also, you can set up public and private keys so that you don't have to use a password. So you can use public and private keys with it. Yes. Um, I can't answer your question directly about what the security implications are. Um, I believe it's pretty secure and the team that I work with use it for some major, major clients and we've gone through some government clients as well as um, some well-known British clients as well and um, we've never had, we, we've always passed our security due diligence. I would say that um, you probably need to um, read more about it. Um, to find out, this is probably outside of the scope of an introductory. Let's see if I can see where, my, where, where the learning resources are. Um, yeah. If you download my slideshow, I don't want to go through all the slides now, but um, there we go. So these posts will probably tell you how to set it up properly, um, but I, I can't answer your question straight about the security. I'm, Yeah, I've, I've normally been very lucky being a light user of Drush. I've, I'm on a team, a dev team of about five people, and we have a sysadmin that sets it up for us very nicely, and I just use the site aliases. But I would su suggest that you are somebody that's probably, you know, find a good Drush user, maybe in the chat rooms or something, and, 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 and ask them. And that, that's, the community is very useful at helping each other. And, and you, I'm sure that question would have been asked before, so if you Google it on, on Drupal, You'll probably find, um, you know, an answer to your question. Any other questions? No, is that it? Well, thank you very much for coming to my presentation today. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you.